You're listening to the Life with Old Dogs podcast, and I'm your host, Dawn Memna, primary caretaker of all of our wonderful senior German Shepherds right here at Woody's Place Senior German Shepherd Sanctuary. Hey there, folks. Welcome back to the Life with All Dogs podcast. Um, This week, we are covering degenerative disc disease. It is number seven of the 20 most common health issues in senior German shepherds. Um, So let me just say right off the bat that I've received a few emails now about, uh, well, what about this? And what about that? Are you covering this? Are you covering that? Um... You know, I'm just, I can't, (laughs) I'm just, I'm just not covering every ailment that comes down the pike for older German shepherds. I'm, I'm covering the most common um, or what I feel are the most common health issues in senior German shepherds. Um, I mean, I've, I've gone back and forth about vestibular syndrome because that's also common in older German shepherds and I didn't include it on the list. And yet, you know, we've had it happen twice here um, at the sanctuary. So 20, 20 is a lot, <laughs> and it, it's going to take me some time to get through the 20 most common health issues uh, with the with the blog post and the podcast. So bottom line is, I, I know there are other things, uh, other diseases and ailments that um, older German shepherds are susceptible to, but I, I have to draw the line somewhere. So um I did put up a list of the 20 most common health issues that I am going to be covering here in season three um, in the Life with Old Dogs podcast, okay? So bottom line is I get it. There are other things, but I I picked 20 that I wanted to to cover. All righty, so let's, let's get started. All right, um, German shepherds of all ages can suffer from degenerative disc disease, uh, the to shorten it, DDD, three Ds is degenerative disc disease, just like uh, DM is short for degenerative myelopathy. So you you may see it online as degenerative disc disease, but if you see DDD, three Ds, that is short for degenerative disc disease. So um, German shepherds of all ages suffer from that, but the condition is more common in older German shepherds. Um, DDD is a result of aging and wear on the spinal discs. As they get, it's the same as in people. As they get older, these discs or the discs are the, the cushions between the vertebrae. They begin to break down, harden, and then shrink in size. And this causes, it causes pain. Um, and, and, the pain can be in, in different areas um, of the spine or even in the neck, for, for that matter, depending on where uh, the degeneration is, is taking place. So the pain can, it can, sh- you know, course through your dog's back. It can shoot up the neck. Uh, it can do both. It, it's not limited to just one or the other. It can be both. But symptoms include uh, pain, loss of mobility, and even paralysis. In some cases, surgery may be necessary to help alleviate symptoms or to stop the progress of the disease as much as possible. Um, So anyway, in this podcast, we're going to be discussing uh, degenerative disc disease, the symptoms, treatment, and possibly even preventing it in your senior German Shepherd, if at all possible. Alrighty, so let's get to it. What is DDD? Degenerative disc disease is caused by a deterioration of the outer part of the disc, which then eventually results in a disc rupture or herniation, also known as a slip disc. Um, and if anyone's had that before, you just, you know how painful it is. Um, now imagine being a dog and not being able to you know, tell someone the the kind of pain that you're in. Oh, it's just sad to even think about. 
Um, and again, it can happen to any disc in the spine. So it can happen in the back and it can happen in the neck or both. And as I mentioned earlier, symptoms will differ depending on where the rupture or the herniation is lo located in the spine. Um, typically, a rupture will happen when your fur friend tries to jump down off the bed or, or the sofa, um, which in the past may have, it might not have been a big deal for him at all. But now that the degeneration is taking place, um, the discs have weakened. And even a small jump can be can be a big deal. All right. And I've mentioned this numerous times. The Life with Old Dogs blog posts are correlating with or correlated with the podcast this season. So I'll post a link for the blog post in the show notes for the podcast. This way you can go to the blog post and see um, any imagery that I have, I have up on the blog post that, you know, obviously you can't see here in the podcast. All right. What are the symptoms of DDD? Um, so symptoms may be sudden or gradual. All right. That's something to know right off the bat. The number one is, is pain. There's pain. Again, if you've ever had, you know, back back problems, you've ever had a herniated disc, slip disc, you know it hurts. It's it's no fun. Um, nerve damage. Nerve damage can be a big factor if you have, um, if your dog has a herniated disc and it's, it's pressing against a nerve. Uh, rear leg knuckling under when walking, which could absolutely look like degenerative myelopathy. And again, the rear leg knuckling under when walking is a result of um, something pressing against the nerves in the spine. Weakening in the back end. Limp tail. Urinary or fecal incontinence. Trembling legs. Rear legs crossing over when walking. Again, could these all could look exactly like degenerative myelopathy. Loss of mobility and paralysis. So before I move on, I, I just want to pause here and I want to share a little little um, story about Heidi. She was a sanctuary resident that we had here um, several years back, and she was with us for five years. And I, I did share this story in another another podcast, but Heidi had degenerative disc disease and then ended up herniating a disc. Um she 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 was older. She was uh, 12, I believe, but she was full of energy. She was full of energy, even though, you know, she had aches and pains. Nothing slowed her down. Um, she had husky in her. She was a German Shepherd um, husky mix, but she looked mostly German Shepherd. And as anyone, anyone knows who's ever had huskies, you know they don't age the same way as German Shepherds do. They're, they're pretty active, you know, well into their golden years. And that's how Heidi was. So anyway, aside from uh, the aches and pains, you know, what, what was ailing her, she still ran all over the place like like a nut. In fact, I used to call her cuckoo cachoo because she was just so nutty. <laughs> Um, and so anyway, one time she was outside um, in the dog yard. So we have, we have right outside the back of our house here, we have a dog door from the house that goes into a fenced in yard. Um, it's got four foot chain link fence all around it. Um, and then, you know, we have acreage on top of that, but we have this one yard that I let the dogs in and out of. They can go in and out pretty much all day long um, as long as that dog door is open and they're contained in this this very secure dog yard. Uh, anyway, long story short, we have chickens too. And there were chickens on the other side of the fence just doing chicken things. And Heidi was running up and down the fence line chasing after the chickens. Well, it had rained the day before and the ground was pretty muddy and wet. And Heidi slipped. Heidi was running full full speed and she slipped and she herniated she herniated a disc. That's exactly how it went down. And if I didn't know what happened to Heidi, I if I saw her like out at Tractor Supply or something like that, I would have thought for sure she had degener uh, degenerative myelopathy because the symptoms were the exact same. Only hers were immediate and not gradual like degenerative myelopathy. So um, yeah, anyway, 
that's that's the story about Heidi. Her degenerative disc disease looked exactly, exactly like degenerative myelopathy. In fact, she needed a wheel cart. Um, never did get her mobility after that. Okay, treatment options for DDD. If your senior German Shepherd is exhibiting any of the symptoms I mentioned above, which you can go again to the blog post and, and look at the symptoms, he should be taken to your trusted veterinarian to be examined immediately, all right, immediately. It, can, it is an emergency. You need to have that checked out immediately. If it's something that's gradual and, and you know, it's going on for a long period of time, you still need to have it checked out. But if 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 all of a sudden you're seeing your dog can't walk and there is limited mobility and they're in pain, they need to be examined immediately. Okay, um, getting them to the to the veterinarian right away um, will ensure the best possible outcome. Once your fur friend is under veterinary care, he will undergo neurological examination. And most likely, um, he's going to need, at the very least, an x-ray, but possibly an MRI to uh, look for any sort of herniation or, you know, to determine the location of the disc causing the problem. All right. Once that has been determined, then then there's going to be um, a course of action, a treatment plan put into place. Um, and treatment may include one of the following or a combination of the following. Right off the bat, there's there's going to be an anti-inflammatory medication, an N NSAID, um, put to use to help reduce the swelling um, and uh, also the pain. So typically it's like a Rimadyl or Carprofen or maybe even a Gabapentin or something along those lines. Uh, limited activity and, and rest, which, you know, might be hard for some dogs, but they, they have to have limited activity and rest to, um, to limit the chance of aggravating the 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 disc in question or discs in question any any further. All right, uh, surgery. Surgery may be a very real possibility. So surgery would be to remove the hardened disc material that may be pressing it against the spine. Um, surgery may be needed when NSAIDs and limited activity don't work. And then finally, physical therapy. Um, which could be a hydrotherapy or something along those lines. And there's something that I, I didn't incorporate here in, in the blog post, but um, acupuncture also may, may be beneficial uh, for older German shepherds with degenerative disc disease. Okay, tips for preventing DDD. Although advanced age is a significant factor in DDD, there are still ways that you can be proactive in keeping DDD at bay in your senior German Shepherd. One way, and I think a very, very important way to help prevent degenerative disc disease becoming um, a problem for your older German Shepherd is keep Keep the weight in check. Um, e even on the leaner side, um, I think is the way to go when when these uh, German shepherds start to get older. Uh, the more weight that they they have on them, the worse it is for them. It's it's just bad all the way around for their back, for their hips, for their joints. It's just no good. Now I'm not saying starve them, um, and you don't want them skinny. I'm not I'm not saying that. But when you're standing above them, looking down at their back. You should definitely see an indentation um, back when you start getting toward their hips. There should definitely be an indentation there. You should be able to feel their ribs. I'm not saying their ribs should be protruding. In no way 
am I saying that? I'm just saying when you run your hands along the sides of their bodies, you should be able to feel their ribs. All right. Um, you know, it's it's definitely in their best interest to keep them on the leaner side um, as they as they age. Okay, another way to help prevent any sort of um, disc issue is to, as they get older, is to use ramps or small steps um, for them getting in and out of vehicles or getting up on the sofa or even getting up on the bed. Um, don't allow them to jump up or jump down, even even if they still can. It's it's probably not in their best interest to still do that. Now, if German shepherds are tall, so if if your sofa's not that high up off the ground, um, like we have one here in in our Florida room, which is I'm sitting in right now, and Atticus, that's Atticus's sofa, <laughs> and he's asleep on it right now. He can he can actually step up on it himself. He 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 doesn't have to. It's no exertion for him whatsoever to get up on the sofa because um, he's tall. He's tall and he can get up on it and down off of it with ease. There's no jumping involved. But um, if if you have like a bigger vehicle, like I, I have, I have two vehicles. I have a Jeep. I have a Jeep compass. Nobody, nobody has to jump to get in and out of my Jeep compass, but I also have a Dodge Ram. And, um, you know, it has a back seat and the dogs definitely have to jump down to get out of that. So we have a ramp. Uh, We don't really use, um, the dogs don't really ride in the Dodge Ram anymore, but uh, we do have a ramp in the event that at some point in time down the road, they do ride in it. They can, they can use the ramp to get in and out of. All right. Um, Monitor your fur friend's activity level closely. So, our dogs are are just our older German shepherds are amazing. They really are. I mean, even if they don't feel good, they're still going to want to be with us. They're still going to want to follow us around even if we're walking around the house, you know, they're mine. The ones here are pretty much stuck to me like glue wherever I am. There's like a a procession of old German shepherds following me. Even Brandy with her vestibular syndrome, she still wants to be with everybody and follow everyone around, even though I know she's not feeling her best. So you need to monitor their activity level. And if you can, you can see that they're not feeling good and they're struggling and it looks like they're in pain or you know that they have degenerative disc disease, it would be in their best interest to, you know, if they want to follow you all around the house, maybe put them behind the gate in a, in a room while you're, you're maybe dusting and they, they don't need to be following you all over. Put them in a room behind a gate where they can still see you, but they're not exerting themselves like crazy just trying to keep up with you. Um, and also a high quality CBD oil, um, high quality CBD oil may have a protective effect on degenerative disc disease, but it is also an excellent anti-inflammatory as well. And we, I've talked about this and I don't know how many podcasts, but pod podcasts, excuse me, but I, I just love Dr. Hemp dog. Love Dr. Hemp Dog. I mean, I'm so impressed with this CBD oil. It's a high quality, full spectrum CBD oil. Um, there's there's lots of good studies out there by a, a third party, um, and you can go online and you can buy Dr. Hemp Dog through their website. But you can also partner with one of their representatives where if you call and you you talk with them and you say this is this is my dog this is how much my dog weighs this is how old my dog is my dog has arthritis that's what I want this CBD oil for they are going to find the perfect um, dose for you for your specific dog's needs and then get this In a few weeks, they're going to call you on the phone and they're going to ask how it's going. And if it's going great, great. If it's not going great, they're going to, they're going to figure it out with you, a different dose. Um, And 
and they're going to stick with you until you see the results that you want to see um, to the best of, you know, to the best of anyone's ability in in your dog. So I just love the fact that they're so hands-on and and actually form a partnership with you. And, you know, you're not just buying CBD oil online and that's it. <laughs> you know, you never you never get to know anything else. You, you get the product, they take your money, and, and that's it. <laughs> so love Dr. Dr. Hemp Dog CBD oil. Uh, and lastly, collagen supplements. So we're big on collagen supplements for the senior uh, German Shepherd residents here at Woody's Place. It certainly can't hurt. Um, and, um, you know, it. I, I say you know a lot. Gosh, I need to put a rubber band around my wrist. And every time I say you know, I need to snap that thing. <laughs> it's It's been a habit of mine since I was a teenager, and I need to stop it. Anyway, good collagen supplement. Also, you want to incorporate that. All right. So if you think your senior German Shepherd is hurting, all right, it looks like he's hurting. Um, Older German Shepherds with degenerative disc disease will typically have an arched back. Prince has it. Champ had it. Heidi had it. I mean, you can visibly see sometimes the the problem in their spine and it's it's arched. Okay, and the symptoms of degenerative disc disease, as I mentioned, um, can often be mistaken for other types of pain and can lead to a serious disability if not treated early enough. All right, so I mentioned before, it does look like degenerative myelopathy as well in the later stages. There are different stages of DDD, uh, ranging from mild to moderate to, to severe. So by the time it's it's severe and they've uh, lost mobility or even have become uh, paralyzed, which was the case in Heidi, it can certainly look like degenerative myelopathy. And that is considered a serious disability. Uh, DDD does not have an exact age range for onset, but typically it occurs between, it's really geriatric German shepherds and other dogs, other dogs as well. Throughout this whole podcast episode, um, I'm sorry, not episode, but season three. Um, when I say senior German Shepherds, older German Shepherds, I mean, there are other dogs who are susceptible to all of these um, common health issues in, in senior German Shepherds. But anyway, um, yeah, so 10 to 12 years old is, is it typically occurs. That's really when the spine's pretty much just wearing out. And do keep in mind, 10 to 12 years old, they're geriatric at that point, not, not seniors, they're geriatric. Uh, and DDD affects about 15% of all dogs over eight years old. So if you notice any unusual behavior in your dog's back end, again, don't wait. Don't wait. Schedule an appointment with your trusted veterinarian and get it checked out. At the very least, maybe they just need some sort of a medication such as like a carprofen, rimadil, or a gabapentin, um, and two, CBD oil. Um, in the blog post, I incorporated, um, well, I didn't incorporate it in the blog post. It's actually another blog post of a list of supplements we use for our senior German shepherds here at the sanctuary. Um, so there's a link in the blog post. You can, you can check that out if you want to see what supplements we use. And again, well, let me back up a second here. So the supplements we use, um, they do differ from time to time, but collagen is always a supplement that we use. Turmeric is always something that we use. Coconut oil is always something that we use, uh, but we will use Sam E for different reasons. Uh, we use like a well lactin for for different reasons, or you know, salmon oil, omega threes. That's that's something we we try to use on a on a regular basis, but we will switch the source of the omega three around from time to time, um, depending on different needs and, and dogs. All right. And probiotics is something we use regularly. 
Um, CBD oil, again, huge proponents of Dr. Hemp Dog CBD oil. If you go to the blog post, you'll see at the end of the blog post, I make mention um, to our preferred CBD oil. And because they love us so much there, <laughs> they gave us a a discount code for any of you who would like to use it. Um, and it is in the blog post. It is 10% off Dr. Hemp Dog CBD oil. So um, it's Woody's Place, all capital letters, is the, the discount code. So get 10% on us. And I, I mean, I don't even think there's any end in sight to that. That's just like open-ended. So you're welcome. <laughs> All right. So that's it. That's all I have for this week. This one's a little bit of a a shorter episode here. Um, I hope you found it helpful. Um, Do check out the blog post. Um, Please, you know, I I hate asking this. I really do. But on the blog post and the podcast, if you could at least like, give me a thumbs up, something, comment. I mean, I, I would really appreciate some sort of feedback Or, you know, just let me know that you're listening um, to the podcast and reading the blog post. I I really, really would appreciate that. The reason I'm doing all of this for season three is for all of you, because I'm just trying to share my experiences here um, at Woody's Place Senior German Shepherd Sanctuary that I've had with our residents over the last decade plus with all of you. so that's that's why I'm doing this. It is it is definitely for you. So if you could you could, you know, leave some sort of review, thumbs up on the podcast, if you could leave a like and maybe a comment on the blog post, I really really would appreciate that. Okay, next week is number 8. It is doggy dementia. Um so we'll be we'll be talking about that. Okay, and that'll be that'll be the 23rd of December and then I am taking the week off between Christmas and New Year's. So there there won't be any blog post or podcast the week between Christmas and New Year. And then I will see everybody back um back here at the Life with Old Dogs blog post on January 6th, 2022. All right, folks, until then, be well.